All right, folks. Good evening. I call the City Council Committee of the Whole meeting to order uh, for Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024. A lot of things going on, but especially the terrible situation in North Carolina, South Carolina. We'll have a moment of silence. Thank you. If you'd please uh, stand and join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and again, good evening and welcome, everyone. Uh, as we begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole, I'd like to welcome everybody in attendance and anybody who's watching through any particular electronic device. We respectfully welcome your comments and opinions, but please keep in mind that as you share your thoughts, you're sharing them with your fellow Davenporters and anybody throughout the region. We're happy you're participating in your city government, but ask that your participation please uh, reflect the common desire we all share to make Davenport a better place. For the folks in here, just a reminder, please, if you have a cell phone, I'd ask you to just please put it on silent or turn it off, simply that it doesn't get in the way of anybody talking. If you want to address the council on any particular agenda item or at the end, um, wait for the chair or the mayor uh, to recognize you. Please come to the podium. The microphone is above you. We'd love to know your name, ward, or address. And if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. Um, I would ask you to please address the council uh, and everyone at the dais here as one body. Um, and not to any individual. We'll be respectful of you. Please be respectful of us. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gleason, City Administrator, anything for updates tonight? Mayor, I have no updates. However, I'm going to ask Brian to go back to item number three, roll call. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you for doing that. Mr. Krupp, roll call, please. Ardon? Here. Kelly? Here. McGinnis? Here. Reinhardt? Here. Grip? Here. Newton? Here. Lynch. Here. T. Dunn. Here. Jobjen. Here. And Burkholder. Here. Ten present, Your Honor. Thank you very much. All right, got those done. We have one public hearing. Uh, it's under Public Works. Alderman Dunn will uh, discuss. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the Fire Station 7 concrete replacement project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. And back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Um, next is petitions communications from anyone. Does anybody have any information to share tonight? Very good. Seeing no one, we'll move to our four areas of discussion. Community development, public uh, safety, public works, and finance. The first one is community development. Alderman <laughs> Grip and Alderman Reinhardt will discuss. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Item number one is a second consideration ordinance for case ROW 24-04 being the request of Jack's Home Improvements Company to vacate the unimproved right-of-way located west of Marquette Street between West 7th Street and the mid-block alley. Is there anyone from the public who's here to comment on this? Anyone from the council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number two is a resolution approving case F24-07 being the request of Entertainment Tonight LC for a final plat of Truckland Industrial Park 2nd Edition, a two-lot subdivision on 2.81 acres located at 3680 West 83rd Street. Is there anyone from the public who's here to comment on this item? Anyone from council? Seeing no one this item, we'll move on. Item number three is a resolution approving case F24-11 being the request of Soda Rock Properties LLC for a final plat of phase three Eagles Crest second edition, a two lot subdivision on 14.8 acres located at 1702 Eagles Crest Avenue. Is there anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? This item will move on. Item number four is a resolution setting a public hearing on amending and expanding the North Urban Renewal Area plan to include the Fair Oaks Food Project. Is there anyone from the public who's here to comment on this item? Please step to the lectern, state your name and address or ward. All right, Gary, I live in Denport. I live in the, uh, I live in a low life neighborhood in a low life neighborhood, according to city staff. All right, Gary, uh, first warning. 
and only warning, yes, and sir. then you'll be asked to sit down. Well, Thank it, you. It, it's hard to phrase. It's really hard to phrase. I, I mean, I could say I live in Alderman Kelly's ward, but but uh, you know, there's certain things that I've been told over and over again by city staff that Are kind you, of stick in your head, sir. Yes, sir. Do you have any comments yes, sir. regarding? Yes, sir. Uh, this um the the um. This and the next two items, they're, they're not very specific as far as what um, information is on this as far as the amount of money and the purpose and so on. I assume, uh, I see that, I, I, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm going to try to address this now so I don't stand up for the next two, if that's okay. Um, but I see that uh, resolution on a public hearing for expanding the North Urban Renewal Area, which I think, yeah, internal TIF. And then uh, the next thing you're going to do is an economic development agreement. And it doesn't say how much money's involved, how much um, TIF money's involved, whether it's cash up front or whether it's um, non-payment of future property taxes. So what I want to say is that um, my experience as a, a low-income um, attempted home buyer um, who pays far more than their fair share taxes um, over evaluation, that it makes no sense to take money from people who work full time and are struggling to survive and then give it to economic giants who have lots of money. If the idea is gonna be that a giant corporation comes in and they build some kind of industrial thing, whether it's, you know, pork rendering plant or whatever it is, you know, a bacon plant, um, they should be giving us money, not us giving them money. And if I understand correctly, this is part of the whole, um, uh, sort of uh, Soviet economic style planning situation where we've said we're going to we're going to promote sprawl development and we're going to create industry in where it used to be farmland and green space. And uh, like I said, I there's not a whole lot of information in the what's right here to really tell you how much money or what the address is or so on. Um, but I'm 100 percent opposed to all these tax increment financing districts. The wealthy seem to not pay their first year, and I've been looking at property tax evaluations. The poorest home buyers pay more than their fair share. So I, I think I'm opposed to this, but I sure wish that they could have figured out how to put in a little bit more information, such as we're going to give them $5 million up front, whatever it is, you know, but there's no detail here. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public here to comment on this item? Uh, we'll, we'll go to council and I'll, I'll answer, answer the gentleman's question. So we're, we're setting the public hearing, uh, which means that we're going to put it on a, a later agenda. Um, so you have to do this process before it, it comes back. When it comes back for the council's consideration, it will have all of the detailed information about the agreement. And then also a reminder um, for, for the council and the public that um, we, we have previously come to an agreement with uh, Fair Oaks on an economic development agreement and, and a TIF district. They were unable to uh, get construction going in enough time. Um, so they are now uh, ready to construct and, and go into business. And so they're coming back, the, the time has elapsed and now we have to reapprove uh, what we approved um, prior. So that's what's coming back. The, this and then the next two, we're just setting the public hearing. All right. Anyone else from council have comments on that? Mayor. And thank you, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to speak. I just want to add and remind everybody, this organization from Wisconsin looked at 127 places around the United States and got narrowed it down to five and then selected Davenport. It was an extensive process to find out where they were going, uh, working with a lot of organizations around the nation uh, and, and folks around here. So I just wanted to uh, remind folks of that. Thank you for letting me speak. All right. Thank you. All right. So item number four, we'll move on as well. And we'll go to item number five, which is also a resolution setting a public hearing on approving an economic development agreement with Fair Oaks Foods. Is there anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? This item will move on. Item number six is a resolution setting a public hearing on amending the North Urban Renewal Area Plan to include the 2024 internal TIF. Anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? This item will move on. Alderman Reinerts, will you please set our agenda? Thank you. Um, I make a motion to place all items on the consent agenda. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? All right, our agenda has been set. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip and Alderman Reinhardt. So next area is public safety. Alderman Jobson and Alderman Tim Dunn will discuss. Alderman Jobson, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First under, item under the public safety agenda is a resolution approving street, lane, and public ground closure requests on the list of dates and times for outdoor events. I'll read each of these before asking for comment. First, project renewal, neighborhood Halloween party, 906 West, West 5th Street, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesday, October 30th, 2024, closure, West 6th Street from Warren Street to Myrtle Street, Vine Street from West 5th Street to West 7th Street. And then, Village of East Davenport Business Association, Christmas in the Village, Village of East Davenport, 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Friday, December 6, 2024, and Saturday, December 7, 2024. Closures, East 11th Street from Mound Street to Jersey Ridge Road, Christie Street from East 11th Street north to the alley. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on either of these items? Anyone from council? Seeing none, that item will move on. And then item number two, motion approving beer and liquor license applications. I'll read each of these under Section A, Annual License Renewals, before asking for comment. First, German American Heritage Center, 712 West 2nd Street, license type, special class C beer, wine on premises. Next, Iowa Mini Mart, 234 West 3rd Street, license type, class E liquor, carry out. Next, The Office, 116 West 3rd Street, license type, class C liquor, on premises. Next, The Gypsy Highway Bar and Grill, 2606 West Locust Street, outdoor area, license type, Class C liquor, on premises. Next, QC Mart, 1556 West Locust Street, license type, Class B beer, wine, carryout. Next, Rio Grande Mexican Restaurant, Y Cantina, LLC, 1414 West Locust Street, license type, Class C liquor, on premises. Next, Bad Boys Pizza and Pub, 4706 Utica Ridge Road, outdoor area, license type, Class C liquor on premises. Next, Hy-Vee, 1823 East Kimberly Road, license type, Class C liquor on premises. And then last, Walmart Supercenter, 5811 Elmore Avenue, license type, Class E liquor carryout. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on any of these items? Seeing none, anyone from council? Seeing none, I would ask Alderman Tim uh, Dunn to please set our agenda. I'll make a motion to pull out all items of public safety on the consent agenda. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. This closes public safety. Back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Jobson and Alderman Tim Dunn. Next area is public works. That will be discussed by Alderman Rick Dunn and Alderman Kelly. Alderman Rick Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Item number one is the first consideration of an ordinance amending the various sections of Title VIII entitled Health and Safety and Title 15 entitled Building and Construction of the Municipal Code of Davenport, Iowa, to adopt the 2021 International Building Code, the 2021 International Residential Code, and the 2021 International Property Maintenance Code, and to incorporate recommendations from the code evaluation performed by the White Birch Group and SCOTEC. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Good evening. Uh, my name is PJ Foley. I'm the president and CEO of the Associated General Contractors of the Quad Cities in Rock Island. Uh, just here to speak briefly on the topic. Many of you probably don't know, since 2000, our organization has uh, housed the Quad City Uniform Code Committee in the Quad Cities. So we bring uh, municipalities, county governments, uh, chief building officials, and fire marshals from both sides of the river together to strive for uniform codes. And we appreciate uh, uh, Chief Building Inspector Jake Rawls and Fire Marshal Jim Morris attend our meetings. We meet three times a year. And it was something that was brought on by our contractors to have some semblance of uniform codes across uh, all municipalities. So they're working in one, one municipality and can go to the next and work with similar codes. So we encourage uh, the council to, uh, to pass codes and, and to update it as you see fit and appreciate that. Mm -hmm but do want to let you know that your uh, officials do participate in our meetings. Great discussions. We have architects there, developers. We invite the Home Builders Association along with our AGC group, which is comprised of uh, union contract, general contractors and subcontractors um, as well. So thank you much. Thank you. Anyone else? Council? Seeing none of this <clears throat> item, will move on. I, I, sorry. Oh, Mr. Kelly, Alderman Kelly. Sorry. I'm a little slow here. I just wanted to ask um, <clears throat> Attorney Huff what we have on record now for abatement. If I can get an answer to that, that'll help me somewhat. Under the state law, I'm sorry.
So, Alderman Kelly, I think you're referring to item number two on the agenda for rent abatement. Um, I would have to get back to you on the, any state codes in Iowa. It, I believe was your question you kind of tailed off at the end. Yeah, you have to bear with me under the weather. Sorry, sir. Yeah. So, yes, so if you're referring to our own Davenport ordinances, there are no rent abatements currently. I do. I will have to check, but I do not believe there's a state code on rent abatement okay. either. This is a municipality issue that's um, been taken up by a couple other municipalities in Iowa. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number two is the first consideration of an ordinance amending chapter 8.15 entitled Neighborhood Enhancement, Property Maintenance of the Municipal Code of Davenport, Iowa to add requirements for rent abatement. And before I ask for any public with comment, I'm gonna have, could I have Director Oswald come up and give us a brief presentation of what we got going here? Oh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, thank you for having me up today. Uh, so with uh, inquiries from the Quad City uh, Tenant Alliance, they brought forward the rent abatement programs that the city of Iowa City currently has on their books to help tenants prepare for any type of vacation from a rental property that may find themselves struggling to find a new apartment, coming up with down payments, anything like that. They asked us, you know, Council asked us to look at this and see how that would fit into uh, the city of Davenport. So the process, we consulted with staff from Iowa City and Dubuque, who both currently have rent abatement uh, programs. We drafted, we drafted an ordinance based on existing code. So we didn't re rewrite the wheel here. We took what Iowa City had, we took what Dubuque had, took the best of it, put it together. Um, we reviewed with the Quad City Tenant Alliance. We've had, we had multiple meetings with them to say, hey, this is, this is where we're going. Does this still fit your, your original idea of, of what you feel would protect tenants in the Quad City. And then we had legal um, review our language. Uh, so basically what rent basement basically is, if a tenant is gonna be forced or will be forced to vacate their property, it's a tool among many that the city can say, until these items are fixed, you know, the landlord failed to do what they were supposed to do, and until it is fixed, tenant can be, a tenant cannot pay rent, and they won't have to pay it back once these items are fixed. The idea is the property is to the point where the city feels these tenants are gonna be homeless and vacated and they need some type of financial ability to first and last payment somewhere else, down payments, so it's to prepare them if they have to move. We don't wanna to get to that point, but it's a way to protect them. Um, so when we use it, this is like I said, it's a tool. We'll use our normal inspection fines first. So when we do a rental uh, inspection, we have a first inspection, we, and then they have so many days to fix it, then we have a second and a third, and it goes on. There's a chart in here I'll refer to later, but there's multiple inspections done. Um, so we'll, we'll, do an, uh, incre we'll be looking at increasing some of our penalty fines, uh, and then also issuing municipal citations to get the courts more involved in getting a, a defunct landlord to actually repair their, their properties for tenants. Uh, we think that's important before we jump to rent abatement, right? We wanna use all our tools but still making sure our tenants are protected. Um, owners will be prohibited per our, per our uh, code from retaliating or evicting during the result of an abatement. So basically, if we abate the rent, the tenant after the abatement is, is lifted, the landlord cannot go back and then evict them for non-payment during the, the abatement piece of, of the, the thing. Uh, also, um, any property, and from feedback yesterday, we'll be adjusting our language, any property that is rent abated, uh, will be placed on the lowest inspection cycle of every two years um, because some items may not get you moved down, but if we're not getting the response from the landlord, we're not getting participation, we need to be in that property more. So we'll move that down. Uh, and then rent abatement can be triggered by life safety concerns or lack of compliance. So not all the time will we be saying, you need to leave this building because of a life safety issue. It's gonna be because of lack of general maintenance and stuff, we need something to get the property management company moving. Um, and I think just looking back in Quad Cities, I'm sure most of us remember the Crestwood Apartments. If, if we had this tool for Crestwood Apartments, a lot of those tenants would have had 
a, a better transition to new homes. And, and thankfully, uh, council at the time said, hey, we need a notification process, we need a better notification process. And at that time, community stepped up and helped those people out. So this is just adding on to our continual uh, improvements. Um, so conditions is basically failure to provide essential services, failure to re remedy substantial health or safety risks, uh, running without a license, failure to respond to a notice and order. So basically we are not getting any compliance. We said, hey, you need to fix this. We're hearing nothing. Um, we encourage communication with our staff and the tenants, right? Let your tenants know what's going on. They know, was, they know you had a rental inspection, keep them informed. Um, and then for some protections, there's not one person in the city that can arbitrarily say, we're gonna enforce rent abatement. It's reviewed by the chief building official, director of development neighborhood services, and the fire marshal. Two of those three people have to agree on the rent abatement recommendation for the co from the code supervisor. So if, if we think, nope, we're not at that point for rent abatement, there's other steps we need to do first, then it won't be issued. If we all, if two of the three agree, we've done everything we can. We're still not getting compliance, then that's when we would look at that code, uh, or sorry, rent abatement. Um, so this is sort of our timeline, and this is what I was talking about. So you'll have, I don't know the pointer ain't great, but that's your first inspection. The, these 30 days to comply, they can be moved, they can be shortened, or they can be lengthened, depending on what we're calling. Um, and also, if we call a roof replacement on this first inspection, and a, a landlord calls around and, and the roofer says, hey, I can't be there for 45 days, or I'm two months out, but it's not a severe leak, if there's not a leak or it's not severe, they just need to call us and say, hey, I'll get this done, but my, my roofer can't be there for 60 days. Give us a contract from your roofer saying it's gonna be done, we'll give you that extension. So we will work, we want to work with our landlords, we wanna work with our tenants. Um, the first consideration for rent abatement would be done at this second reinspection. So basically at that point, they've had 30 days, another 30 days, and then other 30 days. They've had 60 days if we just do a flat 30 on each inspection to get the work done. At this point, we'll review what's going on. Are they being responsive? Is there, is there a material shortage, you know, something going on that's prohibiting them from getting the work done? Then we'll, we'll bring that first review of a rent abatement possibility or a municipal citation are different steps, and then we'd move. But at that, that point, after Crestwood, we said at the second reinspection, every door in the apartment complex would get posted with the last inspection notice, social service information, um, anything we can provide to tenants. Um, at this point, we would also be communicating to tenants better of where do we see this going? Do we see the building being vacated? Do we think rent abatement's coming? We will use an education piece to make sure tenants are understanding where they are at the point. And I will rely on a lot with the tenant alliance just to put that communication piece together for we're not, you know, we may think it makes sense, but let's make sure everybody on board and the end user is understanding what we're, we're trying to accomplish. And so that's a quick overview. Um, I'd be happy to ask for any questions or come back up if needed. Thank you. Anyone from the public? Good evening, Mayor, members of Denport City <laughs> Council. Uh, my name is Ryan Semp. I'm the Executive Director for Government Affairs at the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I am here tonight uh, to comment on this ordinance to first say that we believe that an ordinance like this is important and valuable uh, for the community. Uh, we think that it's important to hold landlords that are creating unsafe environments for tenants uh, accountable um, and make sure that unlivable conditions are not left uh, for those tenants. However, one thing we would like uh, the council to consider in the future is adding in uh, some additional enforcement mechanisms into uh, the policy. Uh, specifically, we're uh, encouraging council to consider uh, adding a notice to the first lien holder on a property uh, that ensures that properties that are uh, habitually uh, failing inspections uh, on the uh, presentation that uh, Director Oswald provided, uh, something around the, the failure of the second inspection or the third inspection is kind of what we're thinking, um, that would ensure that a lender on a property uh, has the opportunity to A, be aware of the deficiencies at a property, 
and be, be able to engage with that landlord and hopefully be able to work with them to help remediate the property so that we don't get into the position where we have to vacate units, put people on the street, uh, and lose rental housing in the Quad Cities. Uh, it, it's important uh, because it, it, an ordinance like this does increase risk in the lending market uh, for uh, financial institutions when they know that there is a chance that they could either lose investment, lose uh, their assignments of rent as part of a contract uh, with a property owner, that could mean that there is less, uh, less uh, incentive, less willingness for lenders to actually enter the market and lend on properties. And we don't wanna see uh, uh, lenders leave uh, the ha multifamily housing market in Davenport. Uh, what we wanna see is people investing more uh, in housing in the cities. So we plan on providing uh, some specific language to council at a future date but hope that you guys will consider uh, uh, an amendment that allows for notification of a first lien holder. Thank you. Thank you. Next. My name is Dennis Platt, and I live in the Sixth Ward, and I'm a member of the Quad City Tenant Alliance. Today, I want to acknowledge the 99% of rental property owners and their property managers who provide safe, decent, and affordable housing right now, today, to over 35,000 people in Davenport, Iowa. They do it silently. We don't even know they're there. They're never in the paper, and they're never on your reports, and they get no positive feedback at all. And it's time that landlords get the reputation that they deserve. And these 99% of our landlords need to know they're doing a good job and they should not be treated badly because there's just a handful of corporate entities, most of them out of state, creating many of these problems. The group, uh, this, this group that I just talked about, they are not the intended target of rent abatement measure that we have here before us today. I can say with confidence that these businesses who make good faith efforts to follow the rules will never find themselves confronted with a rent abatement notice from the city. That's not what any of this is about. The rent abatement measure is designed to rehabilitate troubled rental businesses who chronically fail to provide safe or healthy properties for their tenants. I believe that this resident, this rent abatement measure before us today is among the best thought out, fine tuned, fair and effective rent, rent, rental building code enforcement tools in Iowa today. Rent abatement has been available to municipalities in Iowa for a couple of decades. Rent abatement has a solid track record of rehabilitating rental building code compliant resistant businesses. And for those who are impacted by rent abatement, there is a provision in an existing city code and it will continue to be in, in the city code for an appeal process if the business cited uh, wishes to contest the measure. In closing, I believe that this rent abatement measure will serve our community well by number one, serving to preserve safe, decent, and affordable housing stock. Number two, incentivizing tenants to properly report building issues early. And number three, incentivizing rental businesses to maintain their property investments. Thank you, members of the City Council, Davenport City staff, staff from Iowa City, staff from Dubuque, and the many tens of volunteers and tenants who've worked on this project over the past three years. You all deserve a lot of credit for, for bringing this forward. Thanks. Thank you. Next. 
Good evening. My name is Ruth Quick, and thank you for listening to me. I am a member of the Tenant Alliance, and I have been living under a landlord who is a um, one of them kind, not good ones, and for six years. So there's been a lot of safety issues and health issues, and this tenant abatement plan, I mean, is the only answer. I mean, because they're in Minnesota, and they don't care about us. They really don't. They don't care. They just care for money. That's all they care about. So anyway, I approve of this so tenant abatement and um, hope that they pass it. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Hello, my name is Gail Franzoni. I live in Davenport, and I um, have rented apartments in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, by one of the 99% um, who know how to be good landlords. But my job has taken me to many houses and many apartments that uh, you would not want to go in, um, just, you know, cockroaches on the kitchen table while you're cooking kind of thing. Um, and so I'm in favor of the rent abatement ordinance. I can't see a downside to it. I don't know what would be problematic about it because it's only affecting people who are disregarding the city inspectors and all of the, um, all of the entities that are helping the buildings be good enough for people to live in. And if those folks are ignoring uh, what people need in their houses because that's, the, I mean, that's what they signed up for when they went to be a landlord. If they're ignoring that, then they need to be held accountable. And this seems like a very logical, common sense way to do it. So I support it, and I hope that all of you will also support it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Charles Austin, and I'm a resident at Jackson Renaissance uh, in uh, Davenport, Iowa, and I'm here to say that I support the abatement of ordinance because no one has need to live in an unsafe building, especially when they're paying their money. We, we don't pay to have to uh, chop the grass, do the grass, uh, wipe down the windows, uh, and I just want to say that uh, I've seen some things unsafe, and I hope we can be able to do something about it. Uh, I've seen the front door, intercom is not working, and I've seen that people have to, the uh, police or the care people can't come in unless someone at the door. I've seen the door don't work well. You can open it, uh, you can hit the button, and it won't hardly work sometimes. And I'm here to let you know that I am in favor of the, abate, uh, of the abatement uh, ordinance. And because, uh, yeah, I've seen uh, the garbage piled up. There's no um, staff. Is too, the staff is too skeptical. Don't have much staff. We have to live through all that. We shouldn't have to live through all of that. And we're here today to let you, to ask you, man, your help in this. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Janice Harris Williams. I live at 745 West 61st Street in Davenport. And I'm here to say that I support the, um, the rent abatement ordinance. Um, when I heard of the collapse of the building in the Davenport, I was at home. I remember where I was. And it was really shocking to me to hear that. And um, a person um, further hearing that someone lost a limb or someone passed away, it may not have affected me um, personally being there, even, but it reached me even though I was at home paying attention to what was going on with the neighbors that I live around and I really felt anxiety and depression because that could be anyone. And I'm here to say that I support rent abatement ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Next. 
Hello. My name is Shayna Davis. I am a previous resident of the East Village. I support this ordinance because this is the second time that I've went through this. First time is when 35th Street kicked all of us out. Now I'm dealing with it and going through court with a landlord that pretty much does not care of me and my family as human beings. To the point that I'm showing them pictures, I'm arguing with them about water coming into my house. There's water seeping in. You're smelling mold. I have children that has breathing problems. Should nobody have to go through that? It's to the point that now I'm going through court. I'm not going to say what I'm going through court with them about, but for legal purposes, there was damages and stuff that I have to they just saying I have to take care of, which I've been fighting with them for years. I've been at that place for three years and dealing with the damages, and they're telling me that I have to take care of when I'm begging them to fix it, begging them that I should not have standing water in my basement, and you're trying to gaslight me and tell me, oh, you have an unfinished basement. I understand that, but at the same time, we're not supposed to have water coming from every single area of our basement and from our ceiling, and you're telling me that, oh, we have to wait for the landlord, we have to wait for the owner. When is the owner going to kick in and do something about it? The owner don't even stay here. The owner stays in Springfield, Missouri. And it kind of sucks because I have to wait for stuff to get done. And it's like damaging to where the walls are buckling, the floors as you walk through there, the floor is about to crackle in. Like, shouldn't nobody have to go through this? And this is the second time that I'm going through this. And I feel that as a city, you guys failed me and my family for the second time. And I agree with them that this needs to pass so nobody else has to go through this. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Maureen Hughes. I live at 511 West Star Street, Danport, Iowa. Some of y'all are familiar, familiar with me, uh, the way I come on to about the damn about the head of this building. And we've been police flying about the head of the building all day, every day. They see everybody hanging out, doing everything. And you see, the city was just going to close this head of this building down when the elevator was shut down. But there are other problems that, 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 that every young they know about. And no, we can't get no help at all from no one. And I do approve of this, this order right here. And it's... It actually brings tears to my eyes that to see all elderly people older than me go through this here. So please, I'm asking y'all from the bottom of please pass this bill so we can also help out the elderly. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dan Medine from the city of Bettendorf, Iowa. Even though I'm a homeowner, I lived in a city in New Orleans and actually had was displaced from a hurricane, so know a bit about what the impact was and coming back to a home with mold and other issues and seeing on the news about the collapse of the apartments and wanting to be active on that. I wanted to support this rental abatement program to support our community and expect better of Davenport. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, my name is Karen Castillo and I'm a student at St. Ambrose University. I'm here on behalf of Ambrosius for Peace and Justice. Um, I just want to say that I do support in passing um, this this type of amendment and pass uh, in order to protect the tenants living in buildings that are being neglected by landlords. Additionally, the city should be accountable to ensure that all tenants are passing all requirements, but not by finding shortcuts. It is unfair that people are being displaced, if not placed in worse places than they should be. If the building collapsed a few years back and occurred and really impacted us, imagine how many buildings there is that are about to collapse. It is time to do action for now and no more, no more of this things that people should not go through because their landlords are being neglected. We need to do something. Enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Karina Mendez. I live in Davenport, uh, 420 South Clark Street. Uh, I'm here in uh, support of the rent abatement ordinance. Um, I'm a mother. And all the stories that I've been listening to, I walk at some apartments that just by walking in there and seeing the children have to live in those conditions, it's just shocking. Um, not everybody, we all struggle in this life. Not everybody has the same opportunities to have a really nice house and all these nice things. But I do believe that everybody has the right and everybody deserves a <coughs> a nice uh, place to live, a decent place to live. So if we have Davenport, um, if you guys have the opportunity to make this just, to make more um, just for families, let's do it. I support the rent payment ordinance. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Julie Hankey. I am a resident of uh, Benendorf, Iowa, um, but a member of Quad Cities and um, a resident of Quad Cities. And I don't understand what the downside to this ordinance is to be rent abatement. Um, it makes sense, and I fully support it. Thank you. I'm Beth Longlet, and I'm uh, in the fourth ward, I believe, older person Burkholder's ward. Um, I'm also a member of the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance, and I'm kind of a short timer. I've only been involved for about six months, but what I've seen in six months has been pretty shocking. Um, the unsafe <coughs> conditions that landlords are getting away with, forcing people to pay good money for just so they can have a place to live. Everyone deserves better than that. Everyone deserves a safe, decent, I'd like to say affordable too, place to call home. Um, and it's, it's just not happening. It's just, it's not, it's not happening. And I also want to thank the city council for meeting with us, um, the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance, to go over and over what kind of solution um, this rent abatement, what part of the solution this rent abatement can bring to um, making our city better, um, helping Davenport live up to what we boast on our website as being the most livable small city in America. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Araya Westmoreland, and I'm a member of Davenport, Iowa. Um, I'm here to express my support for the Quad Cities rent abatement. I have canvassed and went around to many different apartments around Davenport, Iowa, and talked to tenants over and over again, and here heard the same stories of horrible situations that they're going through. And again, I can speak that no one should ever have to pay for a house that that's not suitable to live in. Um, the rent abatement ordinance protects renters from displacement by giving inspectors a more effective tool to enforce the code. And I see that there's no issue with this rent abatement. So thank you. Thank you. My name's Kerry Jennings. I live in Wilton, Iowa, and I am the pastor at Newcomb Presbyterian Church in Davenport. I want to speak in favor of the rent abatement proposal. The thing that has drawn me to this topic most is that people call my church in crisis concerning their renting situation. And if I really said yes, if I really tried to help as much as I want to, I would turn it into a crisis hotline for renters, which is not what my secretary and my um, session have set me up to be doing. Um, I'll say that there is a need for governance in this area, um, and I would ask you to pass the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Cheryl Shagna, third word. I want to say I'm so glad you guys had this on the agenda, put so much time and effort to make sure that is done correctly. And um, I don't know if you saw that the director of Humility Homes and Services posted today on Facebook about at least 500 people are now homeless in Davenport that she, know of, she knows about. And I can tell you the faces of these people are changing. They look like you. Like the person that just went through a hard time and they got behind and they could not afford first, last, and the security deposit. And that goes for these people that are living in substandard housing. To go and find some place else, the struggle is real to come up with first, last, and security when you're just trying to get by from paycheck to paycheck. 
So I know you guys have a process. I realize this is the first consideration. I hope you recognize the support. I think you do. And if there is a way to speed up the process, to suspend the rules, and make this happen faster, I think everybody would appreciate that. Thank you. My name is Mary Johansson, and I live in the first ward. I've been a citizen ever since I was a little itty bitty at Davenport, and uh, my mother had four children that she supported by herself. She always was looking for the cheaper place to live so that she could have food for us. We ended up in uh, the East End on 6th Street. Rats. And that was uh, when I was 12 years old. And I'm 73 now. Things need to change in this city. Pete Renners need a voice. And if you can do this with the red abatement code, please help these people because it's been going on way too long. Um, I'm a homeowner and I stand for renters uh, to have a safe place to live. So please support this uh, and consider it. Uh, it needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Next. <coughs> yeah, Paul Vasquez, Third Ward City of Davenport. I'm not a member of the Alliance, but I support them completely, and I give them a lot of credit for what they do and behind them. I want to start my comments on this, though, with a couple stories, so bear with me. Years ago, I attended a management uh, meeting hosted by a leading consultant to business and industry, and he said, sometimes things are so important that you have to ready, fire, and then aim. Some things need to be done and adjusted afterwards, that, that's, that some things just needed that. And another thing is the great Apache war chief, Geronimo, in 1905, granted an interview to a Stephen Barrett. In that, he said that it was a man's responsibility to take care of his family, and take care of his people. That's why he fought so long, maybe for what he did, for what was right. And I see this ordinance as a little bit of both of those items. It's important. It needs to be passed, implemented, and then if necessary, adjustments made to it to make it work. It helps folks that may not be as fortunate as we are, as others are. We're all one family, after all, aren't we? Isn't that what we are supposed to do? In the past, I have heard, when I have spoke about other things, or I've heard the comment that uh, you're the only one complaining or not enough people are concerned. Well, there they are. They're right behind you. They're speaking. You have to listen to them. It's the right thing to do as well. I'm all for it. I think it needs to happen. It needs to happen quick and I think it's long overdue. So please listen to everybody, and I hope the right thing happens. Thank you. Next. Hello. Uh, my name is Hannah Griggs. I grew up in the Quad Cities, and until recently when I started seminary, I was the staff organizer at Quad City Interfaith in Davenport for the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance. Today is a good day. Um, I'm here because we want to say no more displacement, pass rent abatement. As a seminary student, I've been thinking a lot about what it means to love your neighbor and what that has to do with housing justice for renters. Loving your neighbor means writing city ordinances so that landlords can't get rich off of hurting our neighbors. Loving your neighbor means making sure your neighbors get what they need, what they even paid for, safe, decent, and affordable housing or maybe not affordable in this case. Uh, loving your neighbor means putting people over profit. For the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance, housing justice for every neighbor is our agenda. And that's why we're so excited that you, the Davenport City Council, put the rent abatement ordinance on your agenda. We think that this ordinance is great for Davenport neighbors. We've seen the devastation that tenants have faced when buildings fail. Hundreds displaced from the Crestwood Apartments, 35th Street and Heatherton Drive. Dozens displaced and three dead after 324 Main Street collapsed. 19 displaced from the Shirker Apartments. 15 evacuated from Mary Crest Senior Campus. 
The rent abatement ordinance takes the problem of tenant displacement seriously. We support the City Council's rent abatement ordinance because it allows inspectors to excuse tenants from paying rent for a substandard building. Nobody should have to pay rent for a dangerous building. We support the rent abatement ordinance because it gives inspectors the power to properly enforce the city code. We want to see policies that make it easy for the city to hold negligent landlords accountable without impacting the good landlords. And finally, we support the rent abatement ordinance because it keeps our neighbors housed. When landlords keep their properties safe, our neighbors are safe. The rent abatement ordinance is a good first step towards creating a community where housing is a human right. We know that today is the result of the hard work of so many people, including members of the city council and city staff. Thank you for meeting with the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance to hear our proposal for the rent abatement ordinance. And thank you for putting in the work to get it on the discussion agenda today. Thank you to all of the tenants and allies who made this possible. We are so excited to see our labor coming to fruition. And now it's time to get the ordinance across the finish line. That's why I urge you to say no more displacement, pass rent abatement. We hope that this will be the start of many more policies to support renters in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Seeing none, we'll move to council. Alderwoman Newton. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the Quad Cities Tenant Alliance for the work that they put forth uh, in bringing it to council and working with our staff um, and seeing this matter uh, through fruition. I, I am aware that several on council supported this, so I, I again, I'm thankful that staff uh, put, put in the work, uh, worked with other cities such as Iowa City and Dubuque uh, to put together an amendment to the ordinance that would essentially bring rent abatement to the city of Davenport. I do think that this will put people over profits. It is one step in the right direction towards housing justice, and I am extremely supportive of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Burkholder. Thank you. Um, I, I have a couple things. So I'm completely supportive of this. Um, it's been a long time coming. I do have a couple of questions. So any rent that is due before an abatement is made is still due. So the only rent that can be withheld by the tenant would be once the abatement is stated and given to the owner, correct? Rich, sorry. Robert Charles, all Development Neighborhood Services. Um, I believe I understood your question correctly, so I'll, I'll start with yes. So. Basically, a tenant cannot withhold rent on this ordinance until city staff has provided notice that rent abatement has been issued. Um, so the plan would be um, working through the process, but in the forefront would any notice and order is sent by mail and register mail to landlords, we would fulfill that same thing to the tenant via the resident of that property to make sure they get the notice and they understand the start date and the ending date. So it, I just I just want to make sure that it's clear to to people that are renting that if you are behind, that rent will still be due, and you can still go through the eviction process for the rent due before the abatement is ordered. Ordered. Um, the other question that I have, thank you okay. on that. Um, the other question is the uh, lender information. The city does not have lender information, and I, I don't know if we can get that. I, I'd be um, happy. To, I'd be happy to follow up with uh, the representative and, and see what they have in mind, and then if we need to add something or make a recommendation, bring that forward. Okay, that's just a lot of information. Yeah. To yes, get. it is. So, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> Rich, you can stay if you could. Thank you. I think you can answer. This may be a question on people's minds as well. First of all, I'm, I want to thank everybody that's been involved. Uh, Dennis, you have been a leading light on this, Dennis Platt, for uh, 
uh, several years, and, uh, and everybody's been great, but Dennis has, and I see John out there, and he's always, uh, he's not with us in Davenport anymore, but he's in another city. But I want to I certainly support this. I thank staff for their diligence in doing all of this work. Uh, I had a lot of questions about it, and they answered them. Um, and so I appreciate that. And, I, and uh, you know, we will, um, I'll look forward to seeing this enacted. I, I think if you could, a little bit falling on Alder, Alder um, Burkholder's uh, question, but if, if, if a abatement were to start in the middle of the month and they don't get it done for 30 days or... You're, 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 there's also something at the end that they will be credited with part of a month. So when they have to start paying rent, they will not have to pay for a whole month if it's in the middle, I think. And I know we're getting in the weeds, but could no, you explain no that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so uh, the question came up yesterday at the management update, and it's a very good question. And, and staff had had this conversation. Uh, if uh, most, most tenants will pay their rent the first of the month, it's due. Um, so, but we may be in a situation where it's the middle of the month, they've already paid their rent. You know, how does that proration work? Is it a credit to the next month? What is that? Those are pieces we're ironing out and that we'll bring forward. Um, I do agree this is a very important ordinance for the city. Uh, I would like to see it passed as soon as possible, but we need to make sure it's right, it's effective, and, and a lot of these questions are answered because there will be a big education piece afterwards for landlords and tenants. So we just wanna make sure we iron those out. But yeah, we'd have to look at some proration. And then also, um, sort of adjust our inspection timing that if we know we're going to this road, we're doing that, we're, we're making that decision prior to the first of the month and, and make those adjustments internally if okay. available. Thank you. And I just, thank you, I, I don't need any more from okay. you, but I also just wanted to say that, um, uh, you know, there have been lots of discussions about different kinds of things uh, for, um, for people in our community, in our big community, uh, that certainly extends outside Davenport. And I'm glad that Davenport is the first city um, to be talking about this. And I certainly hope my colleagues will support passage. I would encourage those who are speaking tonight from other cities or living in other cities to start that work also in the communities you live in so that everyone in the Quad Cities, you know, will be able to uh, benefit. Um, I think any new ordinance requires tweaking, so maybe... People, cities might not be eager right away, but as we am, as we uh, hopefully implement this, if it passes, and I think it will, uh, then um, people can take, other cities can take take notice as well. So thank you to everyone who's worked on this. Thank you. Alderman Kelly, did you have anything to add? I did, thank you. You betcha. So if we can come back up, I guess my question, I jumped the gun earlier. <coughs> okay, Alderman Kelly. Hey, sorry about it. Um, not sorry. Anyway, <laughs> the question I had to ask Council uh, Huff, I guess I want to ask, so what does the state of Iowa require for abatement right now? Then? So do we not have that? So there are tenant laws in the state of Iowa, and some do address that, but I cannot speak to those today, but I'll get a memo of what the state uh, does have and how it plays into uh, local tenant rights and how it would be different from what we're doing and to get it to the council before next Wednesday. Okay, I appreciate that. And I just want to end it with, I know I'm at home ill and I do apologize for my absence, but I 100% do support this and I have met with the folks from the Alliance as well. And so this is something that I, I really would love to see happen. And hey, mama, 80th birthday, year old lady, I see you. <laughs> Thank you for my time. Thank you. Alderwoman Lynch. Thank you. I just want to start by saying yes, uh, thank you as well uh, to the Tenant Alliance folks and to council uh, and staff as well working on this. I know it's been a lot of moving parts by a lot of different people. I was approached several months ago early on and asked about my position in this, especially being a, a local landlord myself. Um, and I did share uh, with a lot of um, passion, I would have to say, um, in, in the case of a mechanical contractor, we've seen a lot of houses. We've walked into a lot of apartments and where people are living in 
literally uninhabitable situations where they're having excessive water damage, they're going without heat for long periods of time for reasons that extend beyond um, something that's out of a landlord or a contractor's control. So when this abatement was proposed initially, it was exciting for me because um, seeing it from both ends of the spectrum, I know how incredibly necessary it is. With that being said, I think once we do finally work out these final tweaks, I think it's extremely imperative that we're educating both our tenants and our landlords of what exactly the outlines of this abatement means and how each party can exercise their rights. So I think if there's a conversation that we can have, a community conversation, absolutely, um, to explore more of these details. And furthermore, I do think that it would be important to add training that would be necessary to receive a landlord license. So prior to um, receiving a license, you have to have a rental license per, for every property. If you're a new landlord in the area, I think it would be important um, to have some necessary training to understand what these rights mean, so that way they, uh, we aren't prematurely seeing um, some folks abuse uh, what this code is supposed to do for both parties. Um, and I think that would apply for attendance as well. It's important that we just educate, educate, educate everyone what the boundaries and the outlines are and that way both parties are enforcing their rights um, in efficient manners. But I do fully support this. I, I'm pretty sure my colleagues do as well, and we look forward to uh, moving this forward. Thank you. Alderman Grip. Thank you. Um, so I, I think uh, one of the reasons why we got here um, is the, the Tenant Alliance uh, made a pretty good case for this, and, and for me, um, one of the convincing factors uh, was talking about uh, fairness. And, and I think um, fairness from a, from a tenant standpoint is if, if you pay rent, you should expect that you have a, a safe place to live, right? And if you don't have the, a safe place to live, you shouldn't uh, have to pay rent. Um, the, the, the second thing, and I think uh, Mr. Platt uh, said it very clearly, which is um, the objective of this is not to negatively impact good landlords, which the majority of landlords are, right? It's to um, be able to um, get the, the the poor landlords to fix their properties and make them, make them habitable so that uh, we can get back to that fairness of if I'm paying for housing, it needs to be safe. Um, so I, I did hear some calls for, for speeding through the process. The, the thing I would say about that is with an ordinance change, I think we need to take the, the full three readings. I, I did start to get some calls today from landlords who were reading about this in the paper for the first time yesterday, and they have questions. And we should, have, we should answer those questions, and we should have the conversations, and, and we should go through the full six-week process and make sure that uh, we're all comfortable with what we're moving forward with. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number three is the first consideration of an ordinance to repeal and replace Chapter 15.32, entitled International Fire Code of the Municipal Code of Davenport, Iowa, to allow for the comprehensive formatting changes and adopt the 2021 International Fire Code. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Seeing none, Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution awarding a contract for the Goose Creek Trail Phase 3 project to KE Flatworks in the amount of $2,846,809.51. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number five <clears throat> is a resolution awarding a contract for the 2024 Bridge Maintenance Program, East Locust Street Bridge over the Canadian Pacific Kansas City Railway Rehabilitation Project to Kramer and Associates in the amount of $931,550.60. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number six is a resolution approving the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the fire station number seven concrete replacement project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council, seeing none, this item will move on. Item number seven is a motion awarding a contract for the EMI's golf course maintenance buildings renovation project to read construction in the amount of $62,069. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council, seeing none, this item will move on. Item number eight is a motion approving a waiver of sidewalk installation 
for Seafree properties along North Division Street between the Sterilite facility and Research Parkway, and that said waiver is valid as long as certain conditions remain in effect. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Gary Eklund, and I, I would like to address this. Uh, I um, have been coming here for a little over a year, I, again, uh, regularly, and I watched uh, sidewalk uh, arguments about uh, daycare center. I think they finally got their waiver, but uh, um, if I understand correctly, this is division as you go out towards uh, where you would turn to go to the airport where they moved Oscar Mayer and, and uh, all of that. So when you go past the uh, interstate on division street, and uh, as that becomes bigger and bigger, um, I don't currently have a bicycle, um, thanks to the city, but uh, I used to have bicycles. And if people who ride bikes, they might want to be on the sidewalk or they want to walk. It seems to me like that area of the city, even though it's sprawl development and it's way out there, it's becoming more and more um, pedestrian centered or, or at least pot potential. There are workers out there. Some of them, I'm sure, do not have car. People who work at Oscar Myers who may not have cars. They may, in a pinch, have to walk home to wherever they live. And uh, I would be opposed to giving a waiver for a sidewalk. It seems to me that if you're going to move a whole lot of industry with uh, potentially thousands of employees out there, uh, not all of them have vehicles. Um, not all of them have buses running. Sooner or later, people are going to have to walk that distance. And uh, they would be walking potentially in the dark on uh, Division Street, where people are doing 45, 50, 55, 60 miles an hour. Um, and it just doesn't make any sense to me of, of, um, of all the arguments we had about that one, that one that daycare center. Um, uh, this one, it seems to me, you have a large industry, you have a large business, you have a busy street, you have a fast moving traffic uh, where pedestrians could be in real danger if they are out in the street walking. And so uh, if anybody should be required to put in a sidewalk, I would suggest that these people should be required to put in a sidewalk. Thank you. Next. Um, the area that he's actually specifically talking about, there was a fatality out there back in March. It's a little bit farther down the way, but however, I do agree that a sidewalk should be put out there, however, um, and also have the crosswalk up to date with having handicap accessibility as well, because that's not out there either. Thank you. Anyone else? Council? Seeing none of this, I will move on. And Alderman Kelly, would you set the agenda for us, please? Yes, sir. I would like to make a motion to move all items to the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any, aye. any opposed, same sign. And the agenda is set. And back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman D Rick Dunn and Alderman Kelly. Next, uh, um, but certainly not last, is finance Alderman Newton and Alderman Lynch to discuss. Alderman Newton, please. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight, Alderwoman Lynch and I have one item on the finance agenda. One, resolution accepting, accepting the annual Bryn Justice Assistant Grant, JAG, from the federal government for 2024 to 2025 in the amount of 77765 Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Anyone from council? Uh, seeing none, I would ask Alderwoman Lynch to please set the agenda. I make a motion to place item number one on the consent agenda. I hear a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Seeing none, motion carries. And I, um, back to you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Newton, Alderman Lynch. Um, next area, are there any ordinances, resolutions, motions? There are none for tonight. Any other reports, Ms. Okay, is there an uh, Alderman move to go to an executive session? Second. Motion is second before I ask for roll call. Just so everybody knows, a motion has been moved and seconded before I ask Mr. Krupp to call the roll. Let everybody know the council will adjourn the meeting after the executive session will not return to council chambers. Mr. Krupp, please call the roll to go into executive session. Reinhardt? Yes. Ardon? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Grip? Yes. Newton? Yes. Burkholder? Yes. Lynch? Yes. T. Dunn? Yes. And Joe Jim. Yes. Ten yeses, Your Honor. Very good. Thank you, everyone. We're going to executive session. Ask the council to make their way. Thank you. <laughs>